Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. My, uh -huh. Okay. Good morning, after, afternoon, and good evening. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, today, our schedule is like this, uh, Shabbat by Nisha. Uh, there has been Duken Lage name. The translation is, my eyes are aching without your darshan. Then we have talk by Michael. And after Michael, talk by Ruhit. The topic is virtue of contentment by Maharaj Azur Baba Savan Singh. And then we will have five minutes of a short meditation. Afterwards, Ishwar Puriji, YouTube talk, 20 minutes, and then group meditation with love and devotion. Thank you, Master. Thank you for the seva. And thanks, I want to thanks to uh, my uh, dearest two brothers that uh, encouraged me to come back, <laughs> uh, Michael, and Vishesh Ji, thank you. Thank you, Master, that you worked with them. Okay, we will start. Nisha, please. Adha Swami, this hymn is by Meera Bai, and the translation is as under, my eyes are aching without your darshan, never have I been at peace since you parted from me my lord my body trembles when i hear the shabad sweet indeed is your voice intently i look for you a night without you seems like months to whom shall i tell my woe of separation dear friend it's as if i've been sliced with a saw when will you meet me o mira's lord to bestow bliss and remove this pain दरस बिना दुखन लागे नैन दरस बिना दुखन लागे नैन जब से तुम बिछड़े मोरे प्रभु जी जब से तुम बिछड़े मोरे प्रभु जी कब हो न पायो जे तरस बिन दुखन लागे ने शब्द सुनत मेरी छतियां कांपे शब्द सुनत मेरी छतियां कांपे मीठे लागे बैन दरस बिन दुखन लागे नैन एक टक टकी पंथ निहारू एक टक टकी पंथ निहारू भय जमासी रे दरस बिन दुखन लागे ने बिरहा बिथा सो कहो सजनी बिरहा बिथा कासो कहो सजनी बह गई कर वट दरस बिन दुखन लागे ने मीरा के प्रभु कब रे मिलोगे मीरा के प्रभु कब रे मिलोगे मीरा के प्रभु कब रे मिलोगे 
के दुख में तन सुख दे दरस बिन दुखन लागे ने दरस बिन दुखन लागे ने राधा स्वामी थैंक यू मास्टर थैंक यू लॉर्ड God morning everyone my dear holy family of love my dear holy family of god i start satsang by giving kisses to the feet of my master santakar singh and the feet of my master ishwar puri ji and i thank god for uh, this present that was given to me the present of the perfect living master that in this life i have met the perfect living master i have met god in the human form and that is the most glorious thing so thank you and kisses to the feet of the perfect living master and welcome to satsang i would like to thank my dear sister uh, nisha for his for her godly voice and for intoxicating us with her love for master um so thank you my dear sister and thank you for your seva um the uh, the saints and master say that love is the most beautiful thing uh, that when we love somebody if we if we look uh, when we love somebody we see that person very 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 beautiful and uh, even if that uh, the face of that person is like an animal has an animal face we still love that person because uh, because we see him the most beautiful because we love him so love makes everything beautiful love beautifies everything and um, in arabic there is a there is a saying al ird bi'ain ummu ghazal that means the 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 monkey in its mother's eye is a beautiful deer <laughs> so love makes everything beautiful and love is reflected from our hearts love is reflected when we look at the master and we have full love and devotion in the master then the rays of our the rays of love coming out of our eyes are reflected by the body of the master and then we see him so beautiful so gorgeous and so glorious we see his glory because it is the reflection of our love in us some people come to the master and they don't have the love for the master and they don't see his glory they don't see his beauty and they don't um, uh, they don't uh, appreciate who he is uh, as they have not built the love in their uh, uh, as they has not built the love in them that's why their mind is always doubting and that's why they always uh, have the uh, wrangling in the mind because they have not built their love and they cannot see the beauty of the master that when uh, uh, out of the heart a man speaks out of the abundance of the heart a man speaks and every man has his own aura every man has his own radiance and every man has his own love in him so if a man comes to us and he's full of anger then his eyes are red and uh, and the energy that is coming out of him the vibration is an anger vibration and uh, his aura is like a darkish blackish aura every person also has an aura uh, that the saints uh, speak about and uh, 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 i read in one of saint kirpal's books that uh, he was saying that if you stand in the sun uh, if you stand in the sun behind you and then you look at your shadow then uh, and you squeeze your eyes a little bit then uh, above the shadow then you will see a color and if you are a loving person like for family and brothers and sisters then your aura will be bluish and uh, if you are like um, an evil person then your uh, that aura will be blackish and uh, if you are like a, a spiritual person then uh, you will have the golden uh, you will have a golden aura over your head that uh, i went this morning uh, in the sun and i was trying squeezing my eyes trying to see my aura <laughs> okay so so yes so uh, out of the abundance of the heart a man speaks and um, and uh, when we go when we go to master a lot of people come to master and they bring their own problems they bring their own uh, a, a mental questions about their family and friends and uh, and businesses and worries and diseases and when we go to the master and we have all these problems then we are uh, raising a curtain between our soul and the oversoul between uh, a god and us 
and uh, we're put we're blocking it with the with the mind question however spiritual people when they go to the master uh, uh, they only ask for one thing they only ask for him for the master himself uh, 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 like when uh, i used to go to ishwar puri ji uh, uh, before the corona and i had like the the the, uh, the blessing the great blessing the great luck of uh, having interview, you know, like uh, small interviews with master every time I went. And I would ask for one thing, uh, you know, dye your color, dye the eyes of uh, my, uh, dye my eyes with the color of your eyes. My eyes are the servant, uh, the servant of your eyes. And I only ask that uh, you change my eyes to look like your eyes so I can have your full darshan at every moment that uh, this is uh, this is how we should go to the master we should go to the master and remove the curtain of the mind and just go to get the drishti pray for i used to pray for the uh, oh father god oh master give me the drishti the mother of all drishtis <laughs> you know like in the the mother of all wars when the gulf war started they called it the mother of all wars and i was praying for the mother of all drishtis Master, please give me the mother of all drishtis. I'm still waiting for that drishti, the mother, the mother of all drishtis. When that drishti comes, that, that would be a great thing, the mother of all drishtis. I guess the mother of all drishtis or the drishti of all the drishtis is when we merge with Father God, when we, we become with him, when we, uh, our form, our inner form becomes pure love and our inner form changes into the form of Sat Purush. When our inner form changes to the form of Sat Purush, that's the drishti of all drishtis and i think that could come from the outside and that could also come from the inside uh, that it is possible from both ways either from the outside or from the inside so so what is love love is an ocean of all intoxication it's an ocean of all bliss it's an ocean of all joy love is god and god is love and um, and uh, and that's what comes out of the master when the master is speaking a uh, radiant there is a radiance around him a big big radiance coming out of his eyes and his body out of every pore of his body the radiance of love is coming out and is pouring all around and it has a field it has it has a big 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 field and uh, and it, it is an, uh, and that wave of love it's an intoxicating love so if we become the mouthpiece of the master then the same thing waves of love and intoxication will come out of us uh, and bless this whole world that uh, when we become the mouthpiece of the master then love starts to brew in us and that love will also reach the brim and then it will start to overflow and it will have its effect and it will have its intoxicating effect uh, remember the story i told you uh, one time about the washerman who went to uh, who was a saintly person and he wanted to wash his clothes and then there was a person washing his clothes next to him and he said uh, uh, he told him, uh, repeat Harry Bowl. And then uh, when he told the person next to him, repeat Harry Bowl, the person next to him thought that he was a mendicant, like he was a beggar. And uh, he just like uh, ignored him. And then he said again, say Harry Bowl. And then, uh, and then the same thing, uh, he thought, okay, well, I will say Harry Bowl. Maybe if I say Harry Bowl, he will go away. And you know, when uh, words come out of the uh, perfect living master, it are, they are so charged with love that when the other person started to say Harry Ball, Harry Ball, then he started to be intoxicated and he started to sing Harry Ball, Harry Ball, Harry Ball. And then everybody around there started to sing Harry Ball, Harry Ball, Harry Ball, and the whole atmosphere became a big intoxication of love, a big intoxication of master, a big intoxication of the kingdom of God and God. It was like the kingdom of God was brought on earth at that moment because joy, love, bliss came down to the hearts of the people and they started thinking and then the feeling of God and the feeling of master was there 100%. So, it is uh, the master is like a fragrant flower when uh, you put a fragrant flower in any place the fragrance spreads around when you put it in the dirt the dirt becomes fragrant and, and so this is what the master is he is the radiation of his fragrance and he is the radiation he why is he radiation because he is love personified he is the word made flesh and dwells among us he's beyond time and space so when we think of him, 
we get his radiance. Uh, there was um, there was a master. His name was Vivekananda, and he came to Chicago and he was giving a talk. And when he was giving a talk, uh, you know, he didn't know what to say further. He didn't know what to say further. So he stopped for a moment and he had a cup in his hand and he looked at the cup. At that moment, when he touched the cup, he thought of his master, Ramakrishna Paramahansa. When he thought of his master, the radiation of his master directly came to him. And the radiation to his, and when the radiation to his master directly came to him, then the words of love started to flow from him and he could not stop. He talked for hours and hours and people thought that if he doesn't stop, then all religions, because he came uh, to speak in, a, about, uh, in the congregation of religions about the Hindu religion or something like that. And people thought if he keeps talking, if he keeps talking, then all religions are gonna die. All religions are gonna subside. This is, was, uh, this is how a perfect master is. He spreads his radiation. And when he spreads his radiation and we are receptive, we just have to, bring it to build up our receptivity to the master. It is like an antenna. We have to bring our antenna of God and the kingdom of God up. When we bring that antenna up, then we become receptive to the radio waves of God, to the radio, radio waves of the master coming out of him. And no matter how far he is away from us, how far he could be thousands across the oceans, but directly when we think of him, the waves of love come. And the spiritual people, they, uh, you know, they, they are, the spiritual people feel that love directly when they think of the master, then a wave of bliss, a wave of intoxication, a wave of joy happens. To, uh, hits them like a jolt of electricity, uh, just like from the cloud, the jo uh, 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 thunder comes out of the uh, cloud, lightning comes out after the thunder from the clouds, it also comes out from the master and it hits his lovers, it hits his lovers, and then the feeling of joy, the feeling of intoxication, the feeling of bliss comes, and that has to be built by receptivity, by uh, making our receptivity strong, by making our receptivity strong, uh, by uh, sitting in the commandments of the master. Once we sit in, the, once we obey the commandments of the master, and we uh, sit in the shabd every day, and we bath in the shabd every day, and we drink the nectar of shabd every day, coming out of the master, coming uh, the coming out of the word God, that shabd, that shabd will slowly, slowly, slowly replace everything that is ungodly in us with love. And once we start to build ourselves more and more into love, then we will become more and more receptive to God, to the kingdom of God and to the master. And then he also, his form will be there inside of us. And that is the most important thing that uh, some people used to come uh, to my master and uh, Santakar Singh. I remember when I was with Santakar Singh and uh, they, uh, one man came to him and uh, he, um, he, was, uh, he was saying, you know, I have problems with this, the light, problems with the sound. And he just telling his, uh, and I was sitting just looking at master with my eyes like that, mesmerized. And I was like, this guy doesn't, doesn't see the glory of the master. He doesn't, he doesn't see the maker of the light, the maker of the song. He, he doesn't know, he doesn't know that, this, that, that my master Santakar Singh is like the ocean of love, the ocean of Nam, that Nam is coming out of him. And I was just like saying, oh my God, he is not appreciating, he's not seeing yet. He's just bringing his worries. And I'm just happy looking at the master because he's the maker. He's the maker. I, I could see his glory. I could see his love. I could see his glory and I could see that he is, he is the Alpha, he is the Omega, and he, he is in between, and everything is emanating from him. So that's why even Sant Ajayib, when, uh, when, uh, when he was in the company of uh, Sant Kirpal, and Sant Kirpal asked everybody to close their eyes and start to meditate, and everybody closed their eyes except Sant Ajayib. He kept his eyes open. He kept his eyes open like this, and he says, he, and then uh, when they told him, why did you keep your eyes open? You know, Ma Master Kirpal said, close your eyes, and he's like, I'm seeing God in front of me. If I close my eyes, I might see him, and I might not see him inside, but at least at this, in this moment, I see him outside, so I'm looking at him. That's why when we are with the Master, we should always look always don't miss a second don't miss a second of not looking at the master when he is there don't look at other people don't look at other people just keep your eyes directly on the forehead of the master and the eyes of the master or even the shoes of the master because you know the eyes and the forehead is where all that love is emanating and then that love uh, we will receive it when we are sitting in his uh, radiance and that love will change us and it will change us for eternity because the moments we have with the master, with the outer master are limited. 
And as you can tell now, the corona, that then corona came and then it stopped us from seeing the master outside. But every moment that we, so that's why we have to appreciate every moment that we are in the master. And if he is, if he is in our company and we get another blessing to see him again, make sure you don't take your eyes off him. Make sure you only see the master, just like somebody with a bow and arrow is hitting the bow and arrow and he's only looking at the target and he doesn't see anything else except the target. And then he can hit the target when he doesn't see anything else. The same, the same thing we should do that our eyes should be just like a beam going towards the master and not reflecting to the left and to the right. And when we hit the target of the master, and we don't think of anything else and we don't see anything else that's when the flow of love will come that's when the intoxication will come that's when the joy will come and that's when we will develop receptivity so um this is my uh, my uh, introduction for today about love how love is uh, an ocean of all intoxication an ocean of all bliss and an ocean of all joy and that love is god and the kingdom of god as it is in our perfect living master ishwar puri ji who i kiss his feet a million times for all the drishtis he gave me and for all the love he gave me and then oh maybe i should read the poem for you before uh, before i leave before uh, my brother comes and it's called thank you thank you for your love oh god can't live without you oh lord you are the universe all in me if your wonderful love dwells in me from this moment i will live when my sins you forgive your looks only can change me my soul cries without ye ocean of love you are my lord life fortunate you can freely accord how could you accept me sinner of sinners only because you are merciful forgiver i am weak can approach you not but ever alone you leave me not sunshine only i enjoy with you full of negation without you your sound is bright and full of blessings present me all i was missing it is going on without interruption now it shows me right direction he's talking about the sound that how it showed him the right direction so this poem was from my holy master santakar singh um, and he wrote a lot of poems and he sang to god and when he started singing he mesmerized the whole audience why because love was like overflowing from him and everybody was really we can see i i told some of you about my experience as a young man i was joining the indian navy and after the navy interview i came out and i met a man with a turban on his head and he was saying good luck good luck and i said why are you speaking uh, in english you can speak in, to me in indian language he said do you have a piece of paper he said yes so i just come out of the interview with my little bag and my papers so i gave him a piece of paper and he looked at my eyes and began to write something on it and then he folded the paper said hold it in your hand fold it double fold it hold in your hand have you another piece of paper i said sure all right now write any number between 1 and 10 and i said this is an old trick as a child even i was trying it telling people write any number between 1 and 10 everybody wrote 5 that's the middle number and he's expecting me to write 5 i'm going to call his bluff off i'll write a different number so i wrote 3 he said write the name of any flower I knew the most common flower in that part of the country is the rose and that he thinks I'll write the rose. Instantly I will react and write rose. I must write the name of a flower this guy may never have heard of. Now, the interview was in a different state. I was from Punjab, the interview was in Uttar Pradesh, different, different state. I'll write the name of a flower that doesn't even exist here. I'll write an unusual flower, beautiful unusual flower from my state. So that, that flower was Chameli. So I wrote C-H-A-M-E-L-I, Chameli. I said, that'll call his bluff off. Then he says, write your date of birth. I wrote 1926. He said, you have written the year of birth. That's not your date. So I wrote the date, November 26. After that, normally we write the year after the date. But I wrote the year first. He said, now open the little paper I gave you before you wrote all this. So open the page, it says 3 Chameli 1926, November 26. The same order in which I wrote. I was completely stuck.
first of all it was the first living proof for me that what i thought was my free will was not that free if he could read it beforehand he didn't read my mind as i was thinking he read it before i thought how can that be and while i was still wondering and i said you have really amazed me he said shall i tell you more i said please go ahead he said and i asked you to write a number between 1 and 5 you said everybody writes 5 i am going to call his bluff off <laughs> and wrote 3 he told me my thought process and when i asked you to write the name of a flower you said everybody writes rose i am going to write the name of a flower he doesn't even know and you wrote chameli when i asked you to write your date of birth you wrote your year of birth and then i had to correct you and you wrote your is that correct i was completely stumped i said i can't believe how can this man know i said look you are my guru come and teach me how you do this how do you how have you learned this then he explained to me he said everything is predetermined including the process of thinking and choosing but we don't know that what is fixed so we think it's the actual process in contemporary present going on and contemporary present has absolutely no time at all in it He explained something very interesting he said what is the future is predetermined completely as much as the past there is no difference between the two if you can read somebody's past you can read somebody's future i didn't understand in the beginning till he explained to me the nature of past and future which i am going to explain to you now just quoting that man credit to that man he said what is your concept of time what do you think is time we all think time means past present future past is already gone present is going now and the future is still to come he says is that what you call time the sure everybody call that time he said let's take the present first of all how much time is there in the present present is now is it not by the time you said now it has passed before you said to the future there is present before you could say now the word now was in the future the moment you uttered now it became past who, who do you call what is the present then he said present has no time at all not even a nanosecond occurred to be that we think we are doing everything in the present i never knew that we are doing everything in no time time is flowing i can experience it i know i said now in so much nanoseconds every word i speak i know how much time it takes and it's in the present what does he mean that present has no time now is has no time whatsoever not even zero time he said it's a completely the beating point of the past and the future he said there's no time that you can call now and yet you cannot exist anywhere except in the now he said do you realize you are living in no time right now as you think you are living in time where are you living i said let me try to understand what he's saying where am i living now has no time and all i am experiencing is now all the time i am experiencing now i never move from now i have never gone earlier than now never gone further than now and he says now has no time where am i living he explained you are living in the past you are living in the memory when you say now it just passed but you call it present you said this is happening now you're talking of the last 5 minutes that happened in the past everything you call present is now and everything is without any time in now all of it is in the past so what you call present is really past is a big meta metaphysical jolt to me that such a thing i never it's so obvious what he was telling me it was obvious that now has no time and yet all the time i'm thinking i'm living in the now in the present therefore i'm not living in time i'm living in past he says let's see what future is at least you know what future is he says future is things that are still to happen still to come he says no supposing you lost the power of hoping for things you lost the power of fearing things you lost the power of anticipating things supposing there was no such word as hope anticipation fear would there still be a future 
They contemplated upon it. Future is being created by these three activities of the mind. It didn't expect to be before at all. That if we don't hope for something, there is no future. If you are not afraid of something, it, there is no future. If you don't anticipate, all these three things are anticipation. Hope is a positive anticipation. Fear is the negative anticipation. And anticipation is a neutral anticipation. We are anticipating that this will happen and it happens. And that's the only future we know of. He said, do you know, hope, fear, anticipation takes time. Therefore, since anything that takes time is in the past, they are all past. All your future is past. He said, you didn't realize that what you called past, present and future, the past was past, the present was past, the future was past. You have no way to live in the now or in the future. You can only live in the past. A big enough sermon to me, it was already overwhelming, but he overwhelmed me further. He said, there is no way the human being in the physical state can live in the past, except through memory. You can only recall and relive what is in the past. You cannot live physically, consciously in the past. And he said, do you know what you think is a real living around you? It's just a replay through memory of something that has happened. Big lesson, very deep metaphysical lesson. We don't even seem to realize it. It looks so obvious to me when he explained to me that the nature of time is not what we think it is. And therefore we are living in memory, but coming so sharply, it passes so quickly that we have created a notion of past, present and future and think time is flowing in that direction and that we can't go backwards and the physical state of time is where we are out of control completely control. we have no control over this movement through time we have no control over the space at which we are traveling through time we have no control over the knowledge that we get it seems to be pre-recorded and therefore it's a replay if it is through memory it has to be a replay how could you remember something that never happened Therefore, when it is a memory function that is creating an experience of now, past, present and future, it is a function of memory. Obviously, it has happened somewhere, therefore you can recall. Memory means that. Memory does not mean it is creating something new. Memory means it's already been recorded. Where was it recorded? Here we are living a life on a daily basis without realizing that we just a replay of something recorded. And if it is recorded, it has to be predetermined. It's like a movie. Movies shot somewhere, put in a film, and the projector puts it out, and we see and watch it carefully. Now what's going to happen? Now what's going to happen? And we think it's still going to happen something. Anything can happen. It's all pre-recorded. The same thing will happen. I remember a poor villager in India, a boy who went to the movies first time. He saw a movie in which there is a train that passes and there's a pond of water and a girl just is about to take her clothes off to dip into the water. And just before she takes the clothes off, the train passes in front. And then by the time the train is gone, she's already in the water. He never sees her nude. The man went 10 times to the movie. <laughs> One day the train will be late. <laughs> we are living that night. Without knowing it, we are living that life and we don't even realize it. We don't realize it's a program shot earlier. Where was it shot? Not here. There's no way you can shoot it in a now which is timeless. It has to be shot where time can be stopped. The astral plane is the plane you can access in meditation and see that's where it's shot. The whole show is shot there and programmed. That shooting is not a complete shooting. It's only packaging some scenes and put together. Then you have to tie it up with cause and effect to make it a real story. That is taken place at the causal plane, which causes all shootings of every possible scene by a virtual reality. They are all shot together, packaged into little video tapes, into little discs and I'm just taking an example, there are no real discs, but I mean causal discs. The causal discs containing whole lifetimes, 
and they're all stacked there. Every possible kind of scene that you can shoot, every possible kind of life that you can create has been shot at the causal level by virtual reality, packaged, and then the soul with power of consciousness comes and picks up. Any CD you can pick up, any DVD you can pick up, it'll make up your life. We come and say, oh, that looks very good. That seems good. Somebody said, this one is good. We pick up our DVD, start playing. We are in the astral region. As we play, we are in the physical region. And we are thinking, oh, this future is unknown to us without knowing the DVD is playing. And it happens that we are actors like Chaucer in the DVD play. That this body of ours is not our real self. It's a character in the play. And when we want to see, is everything made up by us? We forget that the body through which we are trying to say that is also made up by us. In the same way as everything else. How can you sit in this body and see everything around you and say, is it made up when the body itself is made up? You have to go to some other place to be able to see where is everything else made up, including your body. And that's not this level of consciousness, not this level of wakefulness. You have to go to a higher level of wakefulness. And then you will see how this body was created dreamlike. And it is patterned on the, CVD, on the CD or DVD we picked up in the causal plane. That we picked up our entire destiny. Then it was very strange. We coming from a true home, there's no time space there at all. There's no mind there. There's no thinking there. And we just come for adventure. And we come into adventure land. And as we enter the adventure land, we are given good equipment. Use this for all your adventures. It's a great costume to wear, called the human mind, the thinking mind. We wear it. Wow, that's great. Now we see time and space, and we see cause and effect. And suddenly something has opened up. Now we can play a DVD. OK, we pick up our DVD with the minds intact, and the DVD rolls out and says, now you are born here, you are doing this, and this is because of your past life. When was the past life there? We just got it. We came in where there could be no past life. There was no time. No, the DVD says nothing can happen without a past life. So there's a past life. And you check up, was there really a past life? And at the level of the DVD, you go back. Yes, you had a past life. You had many past lives. And we go and see all the past lives, infinite past lives, each one creating the next one. And we say, any future life? Oh, yes, your actions will now create future lives. And we go into the future. Terrible. What is this law that's creating unnecessary past lives, unnecessary future lives? I didn't come for that. And we see, oh, this is called the law of karma. It's a great law. Nothing can happen without cause and effect. Therefore, you created all the causes. One cause leading to another cause to another cause, and all are leading to different effects all the way down forever. When did it begin? Infinity. When will it end? Infinity. We just came in and we created infinity. Yeah, that's the, that's the deal. You got a very nice DVD. It contains the entire time frame. And now you play it, don't play it here. Because here you will know it's a DVD. It'll send you another area. Go to sleep. And the dream will work in your head and you will have nice dreams about this DVD. So go to sleep. And we wake up, and the world looks absolutely real. We go to second sleep, and we think we are awake. That's where we are right now. We don't know the secret. We don't know this reality. And I'm speaking to you in a dream state about a reality that's wakefulness. How can I speak about it to you? How can I tell you in a dream, as a dream character of your own dream, how can I tell you to wake up? Because you programmed it. You picked up the DVD with this provision in it. If somebody came first time into the dreamland, into the causal region, and said, let me see what kind of DVDs are there. They say, well, the best type of life of form of life that you can have is the human life. Why? Why is human life so good? Because you have come from a state of consciousness, where there was real will, you could create any kind of DVDs, any kind of experiences, any kind of adventures that you liked. True will 
that could create existed there, you are part of that. You have individuated yourself from that will, the great will without which nothing was created, the great will under which all DVDs will play, the great will under which all life will exist. You were participating in that. You liked that will, didn't you? Of course, that was free. It was real free will. Okay, we'll give you a copy of that free will. And that's existing nowhere else except in the DVD which takes you to human form. You go to human form and you will have the same experience you had when you had real free will. You will have the experience of free will. It won't be real there. But since you made it in the original will, it will really be still free. You won't know it. You will think that I am acting freely in the play. Whereas you acted freely in writing the play. That was your free will that wrote the play. In the play you will have no free will. You will think you have free will. Good enough. I don't mind. I don't mind. What will happen with the free will? Oh, with free will you will feel you have choice. You make your own destiny. You can do what you like. And therefore, that's the best life. That life which will be called a human life will be called the best life because it is the only life that we will create in the entire spectrum of forms of life in which you can have the experience of free will. No other life. Not even angels, not even gods. They will have full knowledge of the DVD, have no free will. You will have because of ignorance. We will make you totally ignorant of the future. And you will see sparkles of it once in a while and wonder, I've got some prophetic eyes. I've got some special way, means of seeing the future, a little glimpse of it. You have really no knowledge of the future. Future will unfold as if it has never happened before. And you will feel your real free will. Great, I sign up the deal. They come back to this physical world in a human form. And then I notice that the human form is remarkable. That play that I signed up for, the free will play, is leading me to believe in past lives, future lives. They become real for me because while I'm here using my free will, the free will is acting as if I am making decisions on my actions. I am doing actions that my mind, with part of its special resonance called conscience, is telling me this is good, this is bad. The whole moral system is being set up inside me. And I am doing good things, doing bad things. The mind says, don't worry, bad things are better to do. They are more pleasurable. <laughs> they are more interesting. And so I said, no, 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 I want to be a good person. But how will you have joy and pleasure in this created world? It's only created world. Okay, I'll do bad things also. <laughs> and then suddenly we find the next chapter of the DVD opens up. You did so much bad, so much good. Here's your new life. Here's your new life, third life. Not in the same form. No longer human. Now we become trees and animals and insects and dogs and cattle, and horses and roundabout to cover just one set of karma we have created and then we come back again as human. And we are told once more you get a chance now. You want to end the play or go ahead? I don't know anything about the play. First somebody must explain to me. Meantime I keep on doing good and bad, good and bad, come back again through this whole cycle. We have been trapped in this cycle for so long. It's difficult to realize how many times we have gone through this cycle and totally forgotten who we are, totally forgotten how the whole show was set up, why it was set up. And here comes an arrangement that we made before we first came into the DVD. That if we don't like the play, if we don't want to be there, is there any way is there any key we should hide somewhere so we can open the door and come back? And not everybody wanted that. Some of us wanted. Some of us who wanted the key are sitting here right now. They are the seekers who want to go back, who want to say, we are fed up with this. We had enough of this. We want to find who we really are, go back home. We want to go back to a real home, not to the cycling of new homes like this. So therefore, we made an arrangement of having a key. The key was that we will, in the course of our experiences, meet somebody who like us, who will be able to talk to us about our true home, who will be able to guide us to our true home, and we'll call that person a perfect living master. Good arrangement, made way in advance. And now we think, 
Oh, it was great accidentally, coincidentally, I met a master. <laughs> no, you arranged it much ahead of time <laughs> because you didn't want to be trapped forever. And the little communication agent that was given to us, that little equipment that was given to us called the human mind, the thinking mind, we used it for a while to think. It was great to think and create time and space. Without thoughts, there is no time and space. We thought, we rationalized, we used logic, we interpreted sense perceptions of the next form of our body. And ultimately, we used the same mind to understand things of the physical universe we created in the physical body. We're using it wonderfully. It is a great asset to be able to communicate, to be able to think, to be able to understand, use logic. What better instrument did you want? We got a very good instrument called the human mind. And then gradually, we began to rely more and more on the mind and not use it as an instrument for us. Instead of using the mind to think what we want to think, instead of using the mind to communicate what we want to communicate, instead of using the mind to understand what we want to understand, we began to tell the mind, tell us what we should understand. Tell us what we should do. The random thinking of the machine began to tell us what to do. We, today we are trapped. Not only did we misuse this machine, not only did we allow the mind to become our master, we said we are the mind. We are no more than the mind. The conscious power of our souls, which was given to power everything, to make everything alive and conscious, even the mind became conscious because of us. The astral system, the sensory systems, became alive because of our consciousness. The body became alive and conscious because of our consciousness. All these became subservient to a thinking mind and thinking, there's no difference between mind and soul. We are thinking, therefore we are the self. That's our self. The biggest blunder we ever made. Perhaps the only blunder, because the rest followed from that. When we made a blunder of identifying ourselves with the mind and thinking, we are the mind, the mind dragged us wherever it liked. There's a little story told in India about uh, a little fellow called Aladdin. You heard of the story of Aladdin and the lamp? But that story is told in a spiritual context. They say that Aladdin was a little boy and he went and he found a lamp. And he rubbed the lamp and a big genie appeared. First, Aladdin was very shocked and fear, afraid to see that big genie, till the genie said, I am your master, I am your uh, servant, I am your slave, you are my master, command what I should do. He couldn't believe that such a huge genie has come up and says that the genie is the slave and little Aladdin is the master. He said, go and build a house for me. Within seconds, the house was built and the genie came back. Yes, master, what next? He said, go and make a big bridge on that, on that river. Within seconds, the bridge was made. And the genie came back, Master, what next? What is the next command? He gave a few more commands. And the genie was so fast and quick, he lost all commands. He didn't know what to do. He said, genie, do what you like. So the genie said, now come along. I'll take you where I want to. So the genie began to take Aladdin where the genie wanted. Genie became the master, and the little Aladdin became a slave, following the master. And one day, a friend of Aladdin came and said, Aladdin, you used to be a very happy-go-lucky happy fellow. You used to be a great guy. What's happened to you? You look so sad. He says, well, I rubbed a little bottle I found, and I found a big genie. And the genie was, said he was my slave. After I gave him a few commands, I had ran out of commands. Now he's giving me commands, and I'm following him. I become a slave. He said, that's terrible to hear that. I'll give you a remedy, a short remedy to hand, handle this situation. He said, what is that? He said, next time the genie says command, don't say do what you like. Command the genie. Go and pull a large tree or a pole, wooden pole from outside from the forest and bring it here. So genie says, yes, he'll bring within second that big pole. He said, now dig the pole in the center of my room. So he'll dig the pole in the center of your room. He said, Master, next, next, say, genie, go up and down the pole till I give you the next command. 
Put the genie on the pole. He'll go up and down, up and down. When you need him, take him off. Use him. It's over. Get on the pole, up and down. The context in which they said is that we have been trapped by our minds. The mind of the genie is very powerful. It drags us everywhere. Instead of being dragged by the mind, we should tell the mind, bring a little pole inside our head and use the power of Simran, of repetition, to go up and down this pole. Keep on repeating these words, mind, till I call you for next job. Make the mind keep on repeating the words in your head when you need to use it. Take it off and say, now mind, do this thinking for me, do this work for me, do this writing for me, do this communication for me. Done, go back and go up and down the pole. The answer given is, take control over your mind. Take control over the random thinking of your mind. Don't allow the mind to think randomly. Take control. Now, when you have this kind of experience and you realize that what you call a perfect living master, who comes into your life and tells you all this stuff and directs you how to go there and helps you every step to go through that. Every little difficulty that you encounter, the master has gone through the difficulty personally as a human being and tells you this is the way to go back. You should know that's your own arrangement that you made. Initiation by a perfect living master means he has come to recognize you and say, you are one of those marked sheep. You got this agreement, I've come to take you back home. That's the initiation by perfect living master. Not the rest of the paraphernalia which has been attached to satisfy our minds and to keep the mind busy. In Simran, going up and down the pole and letting us go back home and not interfering in our spiritual journey. I'll talk to you more later on after lunch and enjoy your lunch now. Thank you. All right, my dear family of love, it's time to meditate and experience master inside of us in the form of holy light and sound and his uh, uh, Guru Dev form. So if we can uh, forget about the world outside and the body below and come up here to the headquarters, to where Father God is waiting with open arms, have you nice words of gratitude and thank you to our Ishwar Puriji. And uh, those few nice words will bring the grace and will pull us up into the beyond. Um, and uh, um, repeat the Simran of the Holy Name slowly at intervals with the tongue of thought. And I wish you the best meditation. I hope to see you tomorrow for another cup of love for another holy day and holy father God. So come more. Uh, I'll keep Zoom on for 20 minutes so we can meditate together like a holy family of love.